Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Ever since we were kids, we've loved stories, and we all have a story. And when we react to something, it's the story that we tell ourselves and kind of dictates how we're going to act and how we're going to feel when a situation comes up. We're going to dig deeper into the story that you tell yourself and how that really can change your life, even on a daily basis. And he is going to help us out with that. He's an educator, inspirational speaker, success consultant, life coach, and so much more. He's somebody who is going to help you find your magnificence. And he's back with us. Dr. Barry Fleet is on the program. Hey, Barry, how are you? I'm well, Steve. How are you today? Very well, very well. It's great to have you back here. And what we're talking about here with these stories essentially is when something happens, right? It's how we interpret it or basically what we tell ourselves, which is really the story that we're telling ourselves, right? Absolutely. Um, what, what a lot of us, when we experience something and we have feelings about it, we attribute our feelings to whatever it was we experienced. But the reality is that, that in our brain, we, we have a database that we've been building, um, maybe even before birth, I don't know, but it's been, and everything that happens to us goes into our database and we give it a meaning. And so yeah. over, the, over the course of a lifetime, we've, we've got lots of stuff in that database. And so what happens is we have an experience and just like that, we process it through our database and we come out on the other side with a feeling. But because the processing is so fast and it is below the level of consciousness, we aren't aware that that happened. All we're aware of is what happened and how I'm feeling. And so my, uh, one of the things that I work with all of my clients on is what's the thought that created the feeling that you're having? Uh, so one of my, one of my favorite stories is uh, I, I went through most all of my life with very, very poor self-esteem. And after I, uh, got my doctorate. I was um, the head of a counseling center at a Catholic shrine. And they asked me about if I would do an all day workshop. And I had never done an all day workshop before. Um, so it was a little bit intimidating. But I like challenges and I like money. Um, and um, but there was a, a part of me that said, why would anybody want to take a beautiful Saturday afternoon in October, a whole Saturday in October? and spend it with me when they could be outside doing all kinds of wonderful things. So um, I did the workshop, poured myself into it. Shame on me, I didn't build an evaluation sheet into it. But at the end of the day, I couldn't read the room. You know, I got the, I got the polite applause, but I, I couldn't read the room. And, um, and so that voice in the back of my head says, well, that's because you were in way over your head. You had no business doing this. Um, and and you know, people couldn't wait to get out of there. So I'm packing up my stuff. And this woman comes up to me and says, Dr. Fleet, I want to tell you, I really like your tie. And then she turns around and leaves. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. So the story that I tell myself is she knows that I was in over my head. I embarrassed myself. She felt sorry for me. She wanted to say something nice. But the only thing she could say with integrity was she really liked my tie. Now, that's the story you told yourself. How do you really know that story is true? Exactly. That's my point. That's my point. Um, because I have no idea what what she was, what was behind that. Sure. But but my my invitation to people is so when you so so what happened to me is now I feel really crappy because she's just reinforced what I already my own story. Yeah. Um, Although, or, or, or so you thought. Maybe she just liked your tie. <laughs> maybe she did. Maybe she did. And there's the, I, I like to think in retrospect, there's the outside possibility that she was hitting on me. And she, she was bypassing the content and wanted to say something personal, but then felt self conscious and, and embarrassed and took off right after she had. Or, or, or you didn't take the bait. Or I didn't take the bait because I didn't see it. <laughs> Right. But, but had it occurred to me. But was she hot? She was. <laughs> she was. But had it occurred to me that that was a possibility, I have very different feelings 
from that comment that she made. Well, you are, I believe you were so wrapped up in the story you already told yourself that you're kind of just, you're focused on one thing. Well, I just did this. I don't really think people liked it. I think it kind of sucked. I, I, I don't know where to go with this. Uh, and and you're in the tunnel vision where, you know, that could have been a new relationship. Could have been somebody just liking your tie and you're you're still here. Absolutely. And mm. and that's that's one of the things I really work with 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 clients is when we have a feeling that that isn't comfortable, when we have a feeling we don't like, to not blame it on the experience, but to go back and be curious, what's the belief that I have? What's what's the perception I have? that created my feeling? And is there, is there a, a better story that I can tell about that experience? Just another example, I had a, had a client years ago, um, right after the rehearsal dinner, his fiance came to him and said, I can't do this. I, I can't go through with the wedding tomorrow. And, and he was devastated. He never saw it coming and, and he was absolutely crushed. And, and it, it was that incident that caused him to end up um, in my office. And we were talking about it and talked about just how awful it was. And, and I said, absolutely, it was. it was. It was devastating. But would you rather have her tell you before, the day before the wedding or the day after the wedding? Hmm. Yeah. Um, she did you a favor. It didn't feel good at the time, but absolutely. in the bigger picture... And, and when you can, can think about our experiences from a different perspective, we invariably have better feelings. That doesn't make the bad feelings go away, but it puts it in a much bigger picture. Absolutely. Yeah. It's even if you end a, your a relationship ends after a you know, long period of time, and let's say you didn't end it. But then, yeah. you know, you look at the other person and what they're about and what they maybe what they turned into. And you, you got to flip it and say, you're doing me a favor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the big in the in the big picture here. And 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 what I and, and sometimes that that insight, um, it, it takes some time. We have to get some distance from it to look back and realize, yeah, she did me a favor. Um, but what I invite people to do is to to be curious about is there another way of thinking about this? And the other thing that, that I, I am absolutely convinced of, in every experience, there is a gift. We can't always see it, but if we can be open and be curious to, so what might the gift be in this? That's gonna, that, that's gonna be a gift down the, down the road. And like you say, it, it might well be, you know, in retrospect, she did me a favor. Um, I, I want to go back. Now, can we go back to what you said before? Cause it, it's so impactful about the folders in our mind that we go back to. And isn't it true that we can't feel something unless we felt it before? Is that, is that, do I, I've heard that many times. I, I, you know, when you think about it, how do you know what happiness is unless you felt it before? How do you know? Does it make sense? Well, it, it does. I mean, it's, um, I read an article not too long ago about the, the good things about bad feelings. And the good things about bad feelings is they give us a reference point for good feelings. Yes, <laughs> because you can't be happy and sad at the same time. Right. It's impossible. Absolutely. You just it's, you can't have. But with the, the folder, it's, it, it's almost as if, you know, I, great visual, by the way. That, you know, picture folder in your hard drive, you know, file cabinet here, right there, and you have folders in it, and each one is a different folder, and one might say abandonment, one might say fear, one might say lack of self-esteem, and when a situation happens, it's like your mind goes immediately and, like you said, milliseconds to the folder, processes it, filters through the folder, or, you know, <laughs> For, for lack of a better description, your mind reads it real quick. Say, oh, okay, that's how I, 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 gonna, I, I have to react that way. N no, you don't, but you do because that's the way your subconscious is that's, wired that, to that's work. That's the folder you went to. Right, right. You didn't want it to go there, but it went to that folder. Right, right. Um, and, and it does, and, and, it, and it happens, like I said, it, it, it's so 
fast, it happens. Um, but again, the, my, my point is, so how about putting some other folders in there um, that, are, that are curiosity? Hmm. Um, so, um, so something that I might perceive as embarrassing or as humiliating. Um, so what's, what's the, if I go to the curiosity folder and try to sort it out from the curiosity folder, what's the experience then? Or what, what are some possibilities then? And, and my contention is, um, in the absence of data to the contrary, always pick the best feeling thought. Um, so you always pick. So how do you do that? So, okay, situation arises. How do you pick the best feeling thought? So, um, like with with my story of of the woman making a comment about the tie. Sure. Uh, my my kind of default place went to um, she's just confirming what I already know about myself and, and my level of incompetence, uh, my imposter syndrome stuff. Um, but is there another way to think about it? Um, yeah, it could have been just she just for whatever reason wanted to say she liked my tie. Um, it could have been she was hitting on me. Um, who knows? Maybe. You know, I don't, I don't have to make it go to that place that that confirms the bad feelings I have. I can be curious, is there another way of thinking about this? And, um, and you know, where I've come with it is, you know, I like to think now she was hitting on me. It was, you know, she was, it was flattering. And, and that gives me a whole different feeling about that experience. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing wrong with thinking that because it may be true. <laughs> you don't exactly, know. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, similar story. When I was um, finishing up my, my doctoral work, I was walking down the hallway um, at the university and my major professor ran into him in the hallway and, and we exchanged pleasantries. And he says, oh, by the way, has, um, has Homer said anything to you about your dissertation? And I said, no. And he said, okay. And he turned and left. Now I'm thinking, why did he ask me that question? And so I make up the story. And the story I made up is I've, I've turned in my dissertation. The committee has looked at it. They've decided it is no good. And they've decided that the person that I know least well on the committee is being charged to give me the bad news. And he was trying to find out if I had gotten the bad news yet. And now I'm, I'm sick to my stomach because I've uprooted my family, moved a thousand miles away. We've been living in a triple decker in the suburbs of Boston for three years, um, scrimping by, and, and I've just wasted all of that. And, and a couple of days later, scenario repeats itself. I'm on campus, I run into my major professor, and I say, I say okay, you know, if, if there's bad news, let's just, let's just get it on the table and deal with it. And I said, I said uh, Merle, why did you ask me if anything it had it said anything to me about my dissertation? And he said, no, I read it. I thought it was terrific. I just wondered if, if Homer had said anything to you. That possibility never occurred to me. Wow. I guess you have to look at it from all angles. You do. You know, you do. but how do you get yourself in the mode of doing that? Is it just habitual? Is it just you need to keep doing it to, or or you need to put the brakes on immediately? So, so my bias is that that's where you need a coach, a mentor, somebody that can yeah. look at it from a, a bigger perspective that that's not emotionally involved in the situation, right? And and can point out some possibilities that might not be available, readily available to me. Um, and then that's one of the reasons why I'm so big on, on having mentors, having coaches, somebody that can help me look at, at decisions I'm making, reactions I'm having, and, and say, you know, is there another way of dealing with this? Is there a better way of handling this? Is there another way of thinking about this? And if there is, let's figure it out and let's do that. Um, it's just like um, every, every athlete at the pinnacle of their, you know, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, um, Serena Williams, anybody that you name, they all have coaches. Um, they, all, they all have somebody that watches them play and, and points out 
what they could do differently to improve their performance. Sure. And, and that's what I like to do with people. I like to sit down with them, tell me your story, and let's see if there's a better way of thinking about this. Let's see if there's a better way of reacting to, or a different way that would give you an outcome that's more in line with what you're looking for. Absolutely. And you're, you're going to see things that the other person doesn't see, just like Serena uh, Williams coach is seeing things that she didn't see. And, and since these are high level celebrities, they have coaches for everything right down yes. to, you know, right down to wardrobe, you know, um, mindset, uh, sports, all of that, all of these right. people to keep them on track and keep them focused where they want to be in the direction they want to go in. Yeah. For every aspect of their life. Yeah. Yeah. So it stands a reason to have a, a a coach like yourself who can focus on different aspects of your life and kind of, you know, put them in per perspective and in order. Um, I love the way of reframing it. It's really just telling a different story. It is. I mean, we are, we are, we are story making people. I mean, you spend time around a three or four or five year old, they're always making up stories. Totally. <laughs> exactly. You know, let's, let's play pretend. And their imagination is wonderful. And, and what happens to us is we, we sort of train our imagination to go to the worst possible places. Well, what's, what, what's, you just said that three or four year old doesn't have all the folders. Right. Right. So, so they're not putting it through. They're not processing it, filtering, filtering through the folder to come up with a certain story. That's probably not true probably not supporting them. They're not doing right. that. They're just right. coming. They're just living life, coming up with another fun story, coming up in another direction. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's where the folder starts. <laughs> the it three is. and four year old, right? Absolutely. It absolutely is. Um, we get put down, we get criticized, we get told no. Um, and, and then we start making judgments about, about what's wrong with me. Right. Mm. So how, uh, how have you changed the stories for you? You know, anything that's come to mind, you know, we talked about the Thai story um, and there was different directions there that you didn't take that you could have taken, weren't, weren't aware at that time, but right. how have you changed stories even recently? Um, the, the biggest story, I think that the biggest change for me um, actually came from um when I, I don't know if I shared the story with you about becoming a triathlete in my late sixties. Um, I don't I was, believe so. I would have remembered that. Um, I was, I was the kid who was no good at sports. I was always chosen last at recess. Um, I love sports. I was just no good at it. Um, and I got that message reinforced for a long time. And um, then I'm in my, my late sixties. I'm kind of semi-retired life is good, but it, it's just going through the motions mm -hmm. um, and I saw an ad for a, um, a sprint triathlon and um, I'll abbreviate the story that the short story is that I decided that I know how to swim I know how to bike I can I can jog a little bit I could do this um, and um, and so I entered the I entered mm -hmm. the triathlon um, I was the oldest person to complete the triathlon that year um, and then the next year um, as a 70 year old, uh, um, I finished first place in my age group. And as a result of that was invited by the U S triathlon association to try out to represent the United States in the world championships that year. Wow. Yeah. And, and, um, and one of the things that happened to me is I, um, in the swim clinic in the open ocean, I had my first major panic attack because it's like, what a, I, I, up to this point, I had never even met a triathlete before. And here I am in the competition. And it's like, I'm way in my head, over my head psychologically. This just doesn't fit. Wow. And, and my coach got in my face and screamed at me and said, Fleet, I won't use all of her language. You're a triathlete. <laughs> now swim. And I started swimming and I thought, that's an that's a self identity that never occurred to me, but she saw it in me and she labeled it and allowed me to own it. And yes, I am a triathlete. Um, because you know what I, what what actually happened 
at that moment you're in the water, you went to the folder. I did. And you went yeah. back to when you were younger and I was in, I have the same folder, by the way, <laughs> I have the same one, you know, I was the fat kid, never picked for dodgeball, you know, just didn't do sports, just wasn't my thing. It was more artistic at that time. And, uh, same situation, same. Yeah. And I, there was even a time where I was in a, um, you know, small marathon figured I'd let me try this. I love to jog. Uh, and there were times like, what the heck am I doing? You know, I'm just going to keep yeah. going because it's for charity. But, you know, I also had that, you know, I don't know if I could finish this. Yes, you can keep going. You got yeah. this, you know? Yeah. So what made you enter that? A friend uh, had a family member with uh, some physical challenges and uh, that basically was it. But the, the the laugh of this all was I was the runner. So all these other people around me, I inspired them to run, not just at this event. Prior to that, I would say, why don't, you get, why don't you jog? It's great exercise. Listen to music. It's a good time. And then others started doing that. But here I am running. And it, was, it wasn't, you know, I think it was 10 miles or whatever. It wasn't, wasn't a big deal. Um, couldn't, do, couldn't do two miles now. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get back into that. Um, but I did have the, those self-doubts. And I'm the one that was telling everybody else. And here I am. I can't make it look like I'm I'm ready to drop. Yeah, <laughs> I got to keep going. Got to look good. Um, and you know, we all have it in us, but we just tell us tell ourselves that's those stories. We do, but you also just brought up a great point, and that is, what are, what are we doing to inspire other people? How are we taking our what what we do and using it to make somebody else's life better, richer? Yeah, uh, it's it's not just about taking in, but it's giving back, and and by you. Um, in inviting people to, to run. Um, not only did that move them, but it also set a bar for you because now that I've started this, I, I've got to finish it because, yeah. because I've created my own accountability group. Uh, absolutely. And goes back to what you said before, Barry, in terms of being a mentor. So I guess right. I was a, a runner, a runner's mentor. Yes. I guess. I don't, I don't know. Yes. Uh, we're just about out of time. Uh, Boy, that went by quickly. Yeah, we have like a couple of minutes left, but I'm glad we talked about this today because it's everything. It's everything. Every day we deal with situations and there's always going to be new situations that come up and immediately we're going to tell ourselves a story. And it's probably, I have to believe, correct me on this, probably the wrong story because you're just going back to that old information that's in your file cabinet. It's probably a negative story. And that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because guess what? That that those folders are from your childhood, where there was a lot of negativity. I don't mean if you had a bad childhood. I mean right. we're always told no, like right. no, don't touch that. No, don't do that. No, don't, don't cross the street. No, I mean that's a good one, but it's a no. Yeah, yeah, um, and and there's a part of our brain that is trained to look for danger, to look for what's wrong, because yeah. because it's. Its primary purpose is to keep us alive, um, and and we don't stay alive by thinking happy thoughts. Right. We, we stay alive by being in tune to danger. Um, it's so yeah. But think of it this way: you walk onto the roof of a you know thirty story building, and you're at the edge. You're not going to be standing there saying, "What a wonderful day! Everything is fantastic! I am in such a great mood." As you get closer to the edge, you know you're going to be saying. Right. A warning, warning, hey, back off, back off. Right, right. Is that, uh, do they call that the reptilian brain? They do, they okay. do. Yeah, where where you're yeah. wired to to look for danger. You're always right. looking for danger. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, if I find fascinating is a lot of these principles are going back to the subconscious mind. When you help somebody rewrite the folder, rewire, whatever it might be, it's not through, let's say, a modality like hypnotherapy, right? It's it's more about a mindset. It is. It is. Um, and it's about teaching yourself to think differently. Yeah. It's about teaching yourself to look for other possibilities instead of just the tunnel vision that, that a lot of people are stuck in right now. Well, I want to tell you, I love the color of your shirt. It fits you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and don't think anything other than that. And also you're fantastic. Uh, Barry, what's your website? 
uh, www.drbarryfleet.com. Um, go to my website. My phone number is there. You can text me. My email is there. Be in touch. Reach out. I'd love to, to help you, to help other people um, find that, that way of thinking that makes life richer and more meaningful. And you make it very clear, which is so important for all of us. You know, a lot of us don't have time to process stuff. What we're saying today, you know, through you, very clear. Final question. Uh, when are you entering the next try? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not scheduled for next tri triathlon, but I'm doing a Spartan uh, a, the last weekend in the 29th of April. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. Well, uh, you inspired me and I'm not even, I'm not just saying that I need to get back into it. I used to, even a year or so ago would, would jog every day, would do different things, not a try, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, kind of got fell off the rails, got busy and it's time to get back into it because it feels good. It's good for you. It is good for us. That's, that's one of the best things we can do for depression is to get out and move around. Yep. Get out was get the out. key. Be outside. It is. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Barry, Always fantastic talking with you. I appreciate you and look forward next time we uh, get together. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.